So in the first three videos this week, we covered kind of the, a lot of the high level concepts related to simulating choice probabilities and how we can use those simulated choice probabilities in simulation based estimators. But now let's get into the details and talk about how to actually do simulation, how to actually simulate choice probabilities and how to actually kind of plug those into simulation based estimators. So there's a couple kind of issues here to think about. The first is going to be uh, how to think about dependence in our simulated choice probabilities. So we already talked through in the first video that these, uh, you know, these simulated choice probabilities are defined uh, this way. We're going to take a bunch, capital R draws from beta. For each one of those, we're going to calculate the conditional logit choice probability. And then we're going to take the average over all of those conditional logit choice probabilities. And that's going to give us our uh, simulated choice probability for decision maker n and alternative i. Well, what we really want to do is, uh, or what we need to do is simulate choice probabilities, not just a single choice probability for one decision maker and one alternative, but we want to simulate choice probabilities for every alternative and for each decision maker. So across both of these dimensions, we need to kind of expand our set of, of choice probabilities. And how are we going to do that? Well, for a given decision maker, so for a single I individual, uh, sorry, a single N individual, we want to use the same set of beta random draws for every one of those alternatives. And what this is going to do is kind of maintain that dependence between the alternatives. Um, we want to you know, make sure that if we're thinking about uh, a person having a particular beta for one alternative, that they have that same beta for every alternative. And, and so we can do that by just taking one set of beta draws for an individual, for a decision maker, and using that set for all of the alternatives for that decision maker. So we're just going to take a single set, capital R draws for one individual, but then use those draws for all J of the alternatives for that decision maker. We're also going to want to do this for every individual or decision maker in our data set. But when we think about different individuals, there we're going to want to actually use a different set of beta draws for each decision maker so that we can maintain independence between the different decision makers. Right? We, we don't necessarily think that everyone has the same beta, so we don't want to just draw one set of betas and use that for everyone. We want to use different draws for every individual in our data set. So that means we need n different sets of R draws if we want to do this simulation for every individual in the data set, which we, which we in general need to do. So that's one big issue to, to point out. Let me point out one other thing, and then we're going to start talking about some of the, the real details step by step of how to do this. Ultimately, we're going to use these simulated choice probabilities within a numerical optimization procedure. So that whole, you know, looping through different values of theta and trying to find the ones that maximizes our simulated log likelihood value, that's going to kind of that procedure is going to be exactly the same as it was for just traditional maximum likelihood. It's just that now we've got these these simulated choice probabilities instead of uh, kind of the more traditional choice probabilities in there. But we want to make sure that as we're looping through, you know, iterating through this, this numerical optimization procedure, we want to use the same, and I put same in quotes here, I'll describe why in just a second, but we want to use the same set of beta draws for a given decision maker throughout the numerical optimization procedure. So what I'm saying is every time that we, that our, our, our algorithm is trying a new set of thetas, we don't want to draw a new set of random betas each time. And we don't want to do that because if we did, then it's kind of like we're moving the target that our optimization procedure is trying to hit. We're going to add some extra noise into this procedure and impede convergence. Really, we would probably get Net, our, our model would never converge if we did this because it would be trying to get to the right 
set, uh, you know, the right estimator for one particular set of draws, and then we'd get a slightly different set of draws on the next iteration, and so the target would move, and so we're just kind of, you know, we'd be jumping back and forth and never actually converging to uh, a particular value. So in order to avoid this extra noise that's going to impede convergence, what we need to do is draw many random variables from a standard normal distribution before even starting our numerical optimization procedure. And when I say many, what I mean is k times n times r. So if we have k random coefficients, we need to draw k of those things for each of our n decision makers in our data set. And for each decision maker, we're going to use r simulation draws to simulate their choice probabilities. So we're going to need k times n times r of these random variables. And then within each iteration of the optimization algorithm, we can take those standard normal random variables and transform them into a different random variable to represent the actual distribution of betas. So what I mean here is that the parameters of our model theta define what the distribution of beta looks like. And we're actually going to be able to take standard normal random variables and transform those into some other kind of distribution. I feel like we're talking about disparate pieces here, but they're all going to come together. And I think we just need to talk about each one of these pieces and then we'll finally put them all together into a kind of a recipe here and I think it'll make sense but but we've got to lay the groundwork here first so if you're getting a little lost just stick with me and we'll get there so I just said we can transform a standard normal random variable into many other distributions what I mean by this is that at the outset we want to draw a bunch of you know standard normal random variables that is a normal variable with mean zero and variance and standard deviation of one. So we're going to draw k of these things. And then we can use those and we can transform those standard normal draws into some other desired distribution. I think it's easiest to see if we wanted to just transform it into a different normal distribution. So if we knew the mean and variance of a distribution that we wanted to get to, we could take our random, our, our standard normal random variable omega, multiply it by sigma, the, uh, the, the standard deviation of the normal distribution that we seek to, to transform into, add to that mu, the mean of that distribution. And what we've done is we've taken our standard normal, we've recentered it to be centered at mu instead of zero, and then we've multiplied it by sigma, which changes the dispersion of our standard normal into a different normal distribution that's now centered at mu and has variance of sigma squared instead of being centered at zero with a variance of one. We can do something similar to create log normals. We can create multivariate normals. I don't want to get into all the details of these, but I've got some, I've got some info on the slides here if you want to pause and, and take a look at it. Or really, I would say just take a look at chapter nine in the train textbook for more on this. Um, we're just going to stick to normal, I think, for everything we do in here. So, so let's just focus on that. Um, and I think maybe we'll see in the next slide kind of all of these pieces are going to come together. And I hope we really have, uh, you know, as we kind of construct a recipe for how to do this. So here it is. How are we going to actually implement a simulation-based estimation procedure? I feel like we've, we've basically talked about every one of these points. They've probably just seemed a little disparate. Um, but, but now we can put them together and hopefully it all makes sense. So first thing, first thing we want to do is draw k times n times r standard normal random variables. Remember, we have if we have k random coefficients in our model, we're going to have k random coefficients, but we want to draw those separately for each of our n decision makers. And for each decision maker, 
we want to use our simulation draws to simulate choice probabilities. So we're gonna end up with K times N times R standard normal random variables that we wanna draw at the outset. Once we have these, we're gonna use them along with our data to find the set of parameters that maximizes or minimizes the objective function. So if this was, you know, if we were doing maximum simulated likelihood, then we wanna find the set of parameters that maximizes the simulated log likelihood value. And this is gonna be very similar to what we did previously with maximum likelihood or even with GMM. There's just kind of an extra complication in one of these steps. So we're gonna start with some set of parameters, theta zero, just like we did before. Easy, easy to start there. Then we wanna take the current set of parameters and simulate all of the choice probabilities that we need for our model, all of our check Ps. So let's talk about how to actually do this. This is where we get this extra wrinkle that gets a little complicated. The first thing we need to do is take our, you know, if we're thinking about just one individual, we kind of have uh, K times R random variables for that one individual. We want to take each set of K standard normals. We want to use this iteration's parameters, theta, to transform those K standard normals into the kind of distribution that we actually want for beta using what we talked about here. If we know the mean and the variance of our distribution, we can just apply this simple little transformation here to go from our standard normal into some other normal distribution. So that's gonna be kind of the first sub step here is take our standard normal variables and transform them into the actual betas. Well, now that we have some actual betas, we can calculate uh, conditional logit choice probabilities for each individual for each draw, right? So once we have some betas, we can calculate these conditional logit choice probabilities. Once we have conditional logit choice probabilities, we just average over all of them for a given individual and a given alternative. And we've got a simulated choice probability. So really it's kind of like none of these individual steps in and of themselves is that complicated. It's just kind of confusing to think through this whole process of we need to draw a bunch of random normals to start with. And then we're gonna use those. We have to transform them. We have to calculate a conditional logit choice probability for every one of those sets of random vectors. And then we can finally use those to construct a simulated choice probability. Like I said, each one of those steps is actually relatively kind of mathematically simple. It's just putting them all together here that seems a little confusing, I think. But then we've got simulated choice probabilities. Once we've got simulated choice probabilities, this is gonna be just like, like it was for, uh, for maximum likelihood or for, for GMM. We use those simulated choice probabilities to calculate simulated likelihood, simulated moments, whatever it is that we're after with our objective function. We let the algorithm evaluate that objective function and determine, can I get to a better set of parameters? And if so, step to those new parameters. And then let's keep doing that in iterating over and over again, trying new parameters. At each new set of parameters, we need to simulate new choice probabilities, which involves taking those initial standard normal random variables, transforming them using those transformed now betas to calculate conditional logit choice probabilities, using those conditional logit choice probabilities to calculate simulated choice probabilities, and then constructing our objective function again. We have to keep doing that every time in the loop. And I just wanna point out here, this is why we need to draw these random variables at the start instead of doing it inside the loop. If we did it inside the loop, we'd be getting new randomization every single time. And like I said, our whole algorithm would just be kind of trying to hit a moving target and would never be able to hit it. And so we're just gonna keep repeating that procedure, trying new parameters until we land on the ones that, that 
that are, are the best, that, that we can't get any better, that maximizes or minimizes our objective function. Our model has converged and we found our simulation-based estimator. So I worry that that is all still a little abstract, but what we're gonna do in class this week is work through how to actually do every one of these steps in R. And I think that as you work through this yourself, there's gonna be kind of a deeper level of understanding than just what I can get across by showing you some slides here. I think this is really where kind of, uh, you know, practically working through this stuff yourself is gonna be really valuable even compared to some of the other estimation methods we've used in the past. And that's what we're gonna do in class this week. So look forward to that. Uh, I expect you might have some questions here. And if so, just looking through the slides, looking through the code and, and coming to class this week will be really helpful for you.